Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and this, well, hopefully this will be a quick video, but last time I said quick video, it took 15 minutes. Um, anyway, um, so a lot of people have basically been uh, asking me about doing a P-States overclocking guide for Ryzen, and I keep seeing people talking about P-State overclocking on r slash AMD, and I keep peop people just talking about P-State overclocking all over the place, and I've been basically... So far, my response to everybody asking me to do a P-State overclocking guide has been that it's pointless and a waste of time. And a lot of people are like, but do you need the, you need the power savings at, at low loads? You need power savings. Okay, so here's your freaking power savings. This... Um, is basically power draw data from this system right here at the wall. Um, so this is this includes PSU efficiency, the GPU, the the entire system because this is this is what you're actually going to be paying for these these numbers right here in this table. And I basically just went and tested a variety of loads. So basically one thread to sixteen threads. This is a uh, a program of my own creation it's a little java app that basically i can tell how many i can tell it to put some basic math workload on threads on multiple threads the problem with this thing is it doesn't work with smt <laughs> as you can probably notice from the fact that the power draw from 12 threads to 16 threads just doesn't change at all and that's basically because the threads end up stalling each other because they're so similar in terms of workload so yeah i need to improve that event one day but you know up until eight threads it does actually even up until like you know up up until eight threads it does do a pretty good job of showing a variety of like different uh system load levels um that aren't like full tilt or completely idle which is what i wanted to test because it's like a lot of people it's like you know you tell them it, your power draw at idle is not going to go up that much, and they'll be like, okay, but my, my, my power draw while in a browser or something is going to go up like hell. Well, it is not, because as you can clearly see, one thread with uh, the, this is a Ryzen 1700, so this is a three, like this CPU runs 3.6 gigahertz um, on, on stock settings. One thread with all the power saving stuff versus one thread with no power saving stuff except c states um the overclock settings basically uh c states are still enabled i didn't disable any of the extra power features i just didn't like i literally just did the overclock by changing the multiplier so if you go into like cpu z or h uh, hardware info you can see that the core clock of the cpu regardless of if the cpu is completely idle or if it's uh if it's fully loaded the core clock of the entire cpu is one clock for all the cores so all the cores are 3.2 gigahertz all the cores are 3.4 gigahertz all 3.6 3.8 3.9 uh all the time right they never ever down clock and a lot of people find that very, very concerning because they just assume, oh, my, my system isn't down clocking, it's not undervolting at idle, it's going to be burning a ton of power. But as you can clearly see, if your CPU is not doing anything, it's not going to be burning a ton of power because, surprise, surprise, if your CPU is not doing it, if there's no work for the CPU to do, it's not going to turn transistors on and off just for the sake of turning them on and off. <laughs> you know, it's like, if there's no math to do, why would you be running the cores? So... If you're a complete idle, there's very little difference between idling at 3.9 gigahertz, 1.41 to 1.42 volts, and 1.5 gigahertz, 1. Uh, 0.4 volts. And these are the, basically, this is how the Ryzen 7, 1700 clocks and voltages through these different workloads. So basically, it runs Cinebench at 3.2 gigahertz, 1.042 volts on its, own, on its own settings. And then once we hit Intel burn test, which is really, really heavy, it runs at 3.1 to 3.2 gigahertz, and it drops the voltage all the way down to 1.015 volts. So it does actually clock down a bit there. Uh, one thread and two threads, it's running 3.6 gigahertz, 1.28 volts. And then completely idle, it idles at 1.5 gigahertz. That's a really, really low clock speed, right? 1.5 gigahertz and 0 0.4 volts core voltage. However, your power draw for the whole system is still 71 watts. So it's like... It's, you know, and, and then if you have the system idling at 3.2 gigahertz, 1.07 volts, you're idling at 77 watts. So it's a difference of 6 watts at completely idle. And then if you're looking at 3.4 gigahertz, it's still 77 watts. 3.6 gigahertz, 1.24 uh, volts, you're looking at 78. 
and then the 3.8, 1.3, 78, and then the 3.9, 1.4 volts, you're only idling at 80 watts. So basically, all the power savings enabled is 71 watts. Oh yeah, all the power savings enabled and like underclocked as hell. Yeah, 71 watts, at completely idle. Whereas with an overclock, idling at very high voltage, full sp full CPU clock, you're, you're still looking at only 80 watts. Now there is one thing to note, if you disable your C states, your power draw at idle will jump up a lot. Um, it'll like at 3.9 gigahertz, I disabled C states just to see what would happen. And it, it jumped up to a hundred Watts without C states. However, if you have C states enabled, the CPU still doesn't, uh, downclock. So I'm assuming what ends up happening with C states on and off is that it changes how the CPU is doing its power gating. Um, so basically power gating is the ability for the CPU to just completely shut down portions of the core of the chip that aren't being used. So if you disable C states, uh, yeah, your power draw jumps up. But if you have C states enabled and you just change the multiplier and core voltage, you don't actually incur a massive increase in power draw. Also, I did set the SOC voltage for all of these settings to 1.1 volts, uh, didn't change anything else to the memory settings. So yeah, um, but you can see it's like really, really marginal increase. Like the, the increase here is just like worst case scenario, you're looking at 71 Watts versus 80 at completely idle. If you're looking at light load, then it's fairest to compare 3.6 gigahertz 1.24 uh, versus 3.6 1.28. So basically it's 105 watts if you don't have any power saving, any of the extra power saving features that P-States offer. Um, you're losing, you know, you're burning eight watts more. And the thing about that is most of that is actually not, you know, it's not because of the voltage or the overclock. It's because of the... Uh, the, the reason why there's a power draw difference there is because if you just leave the CPU on its stock settings, it can clock the separate cores individually. So for one thread and two thread load, I was looking at having like one or two threads clocked at 3.6 gigahertz and every other thread on the CPU was still at 1.5. So that's why there's a power difference between like 3.6 that and 3.6 this. There was only really two cores at 3.6 gigahertz, but the entire CPU was still pulled up to 1.28. So that's why there is a, there's like a, you know, it's a, it's still though a really, really small power draw difference. And then if we go up to three thread, so this drops the clock like way down to 3.2 gigahertz. So if you go three thread to 3.2 gigahertz versus 3.2 gigahertz, you're looking at like eight watts with all the power savings. And then once we get to six threads, still eight watts, kind of eight watts, and then, yeah. So, you know, very small difference for the same clock. And then if we crank up the clock way high, then yeah, you do see a, a good jump in power draw, but that's mostly because this is, this is running a 700 megahertz clock advantage as well as almost 400 millivolts more voltage into the CPU. So even if parts of the CPU were downclocking, at the end of the day, the biggest contributor to system power draw is core voltage. It's not core speed. So if the, and the CPU has one VRM, okay? So the power gating stuff still works regardless of if you enable, if you're using P states or not. Um, but if you don't use P states, your cores don't downclock. Like unused cores will not clock down. But you'd still be running 1.42 volts into them. So you're not gonna like, yeah, th this is 40 watts. This is literally worst case scenario. You're looking at 40 watts. If you had P-States enabled, I imagine it would save maybe 10, 20 watts. So if you did the over this same overclock through P-States, it would save maybe 10, 20 watts. Not worth it. Like really not worth it at all. Um, as far as I'm concerned, because a lot of motherboards, because basically if you want to P-state overclock, then you need a motherboard where it works. There's issues with it. Some motherboards don't support it properly. Uh, you need BIOS updates on some motherboards. And it's just like, it's just not worth it as far as I'm concerned, especially if you go like very light load, like this would be like some kind of game, which actually uses like almost half the CPU. All right, and then if you, as soon as you have something that loads up more than eight threads, the CPU will be pulled completely out of any power saving features and you'll basically be looking at massive amounts of power draw. 
So 140 versus 150, which I blame the voltage there because this was at one point that was at 1.07 and that was 1.042. And it is only 30 millivolts, but 30 millivolts is a big difference in terms of power draw. Um, so, yeah, that 10 watts there, that's basically just down to the extra core voltage. And then when you see IBT, well, this was actually down clocking. So and, and undervolting. So. Yeah, that these just basically are worth ignoring. And then as you see, if you step it up, it just goes up and up and up, um, which is normal. That's exactly what overclocking will always do to your power draw. So once you max out the CPU, yeah, you end up with almost, yeah, almost twice the stock power draw. But that, that's normal. That, that's just what happens. Um, really, if I was measuring just CPU power, you would see it be like triple. And, and yeah, but basically using a P state overclock at full load is not going to do anything for your power consumption anyway, because you're, you know, you're going to be all eight cores are loaded up. So it's not like it can just down clock some of the cores. It, it's going to be running full speed and it's going to burn the same amount of power. So basically, if you're if you're worried about power efficiency, don't overclock at all. <laughs> That's my response to you. It's just like, oh, I'm worried about power efficiency. Don't overclock at all. Because if you are overclocking, at the end of the day, if you have a couple cores on that CPU running at full speed, they're going to burn way more power than if you just didn't, like, your, the core voltage just does most of the damage, so to speak, in terms of power draw. Um, that's what really cranks up your power draw. And the fact, like, you know, the, if you have P states, it's like, oh yeah, I have, I'm using four cores. So the other four cores aren't clocking up, but you're still running 1.42 volts into the CPU. It's still going to burn a ton of power. Um, you're not going to save a ton of power by having some of the cores running at 1.5 gigahertz. I should have done a 3.2 gigahertz, 1.42 volts o overclock just to show that, <laughs> just to show the the massive impact that core voltage has, but it's a bit too late to get that extra data at this point. Unless somebody really complains about my test methodology down in the comments and I end up making like a part two more proof um, video. But yeah, it's just, it's not worth it. <laughs> it's just not worth it. All the extra effort, worrying about which motherboard you use. Um, just do, ju just go into your BIOS Set a multiplier, change the core voltage, static core voltage. Don't even use offset. Just go static core voltage and set the right level of LLC. And that's it. That's all you need to do for Ryzen overclocking. Because, yeah, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, you could do P-state overclocking. For what? You're, you're going to save seven, nine watts at idle? And, and not even, well, probably like 20 at full load, like, at like medium load. And then at full load, you're not going to save any power. And then at one thread and two thread load, you're going to save again very little power. Because basically, P-states will have most impact on this range of loads right here. That's the ones that will be most affected. Because here, most of the CPU isn't actually doing anything. So the fact that it's all running at 3.9 gigahertz doesn't matter. And... Here, the entire CPU is being used anyway, so you don't want it downclocking because you'd be losing performance. So the only place where the CPU could downclock is sort of in this like in this load range, and in this load range, you're it's like so you know I don't know how much time you'll spend in that load range, but it's like you're still not going to burn that much power. And I'd argue if you just bought a six core, right? If you don't need an eight core, like you don't care about running Cinebench and like video rendering or stuff that hammers the entire CPU, then you could just buy a six core and that would just reduce your, you know, like your six thread power draw would go down because you wouldn't have those two extra cores pulling power all the time at all. They literally wouldn't be there. So you don't have to worry about power managing them because they're not there. Um, so, yeah, that, that's sort of my take on it. That's why I literally could not care less about P-state overclocking or, or any of the, mo most of the power efficiency things that everybody's like, oh, you need this and that. It's like, the, there's a reason why I don't enable them on my own systems. It's just, they don't do anything. Any, not anything worth worrying about anyway. You know, it's like, why do you use static voltage? Because it does absolutely nothing for idle power draw to use dynamic. 
Why don't you do P-States? Because, again, it does nothing for idle power draw. It would help in medium loads, but... Again, it won't be like, it won't be some massive decrease in power consumption. The reason why P-States and all of these nice, real, like, cool power efficiency technologies exist is because there's things like laptops where if you can save 20 watts of power or 10 watts of power or even 5, you know, it goes a long way in making that battery last a lot longer. But on a desktop, it's like some of these power draw differences are less than a light bulb. You could just turn off the lights more. Or heat your house less. That would actually make the biggest difference, really. Um, one or two degrees lower room temperatures in winter, and it'll save way more power than anything you can possibly do with P-States. Also, if you're like, oh, but my room will be super hot. 10 watts of heat is not going to make your room... Like, e even this, right? Which is... This is like the biggest jump. This is like 40. Okay, no, this is bigger. This is like 45. 45... Yeah, so th there's like a 45 watt jump here. 45 watts is not going to heat up your room. <laughs> it's just not. It's way too little to, to like... Like, is your phone puts out 5 watts, you know? Uh, like, your, your phone might put out 5 watts of heat at full load. So, yeah, it's just like, who cares? That That's basically... Yeah, it's like, you know, your wall power draw, yeah, it goes up. But if you're worried about, like, you know, your power build, then just do a lighter overclock. I mean, the difference between 3.8 gigahertz and 3.9 is pretty massive. Like, that's a big difference right there. And it is still only 30 watts. The bigger problem generally is, is 3.9 gigahertz is actually hard to cool. Right, this right here, that's a cooling concern. This, I think most coolers should handle. This, anything. Literally anything should be able to do this. This, these settings right there. Um, 3.8 is kind of concerning in terms of cooling. 1.4 volts, yeah, you better have a good cooler. I mean, I needed to actually, like the AIO I'm using, which thank you Asetech for sending one of those, um, but when I was on the 120 millimeter AIO, I could not run IBT because when it hit this, like this, yeah, this load level, the CPU would go over 80 degrees and the shutdown pointed is at like 95 or hundred, something like that. So basically, um, there's no reason to worry about P states. Um, what is worth worrying about is your cooling capabilities and, and that is about it. So yeah. I mean, unless you have a Ryzen laptop, <laughs> in which case I'm surprised they let you overclock it. So that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it uh, informative. If you have any comments or anything, you can leave them down in the description down below. If you uh, if you liked the video, there's a like button. If you didn't like anything about the video, there's a dislike button. Um, if you would like to support what I do here at Actually Hardcore Overclocking, I have a Patreon and a PayPal, as well as you can buy old Actually Hardcore Overclocking hardware like GPUs, motherboards. They still work. All of it still works. <laughs> um, it's just not in, like, good, great condition. You can check out the Actually Hardcore Overclocking Junkyard. There's a link to that down in the description as, as well. There's also shirts. You can get those. And, yeah, that, that's it. So... That's it for this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Where's that stop button? <laughs>